In this video, I'm going to walk you through designing in V0, then exporting to Cursor to build the app's logic. Now, why would we do this? Well, V0 is excellent at design. There's no denying that. Probably the best I've come across. Building your design in V0 just makes a lot of sense. Uh, but building the entire app, however, would be very expensive and pretty slow. So if you have the skills, you'll make faster progress by moving to Cursor as soon as the UI has been created. So here is V0, familiar interface, and they've got a really nice design section as well. And the good thing about this designing in this way is that it's free. So we can just make updates to the code base directly without needing to interact with the agent. Now I've gone ahead and just built this very simple booking platform, but like Airbnb, where we have this landing page, we can view homes. We've got a map here. I, I integrated with Mapbox for this. And if we click into a home, we have this sort of scrollable design at the top. Got a booking form down here, etc. But as you can see, the design is minimal, but really well thought through in terms of text hierarchy, color, spacing, layout, responsive design, interaction. Everything is super, super smooth. And in my opinion, V0 are by far the best at uh, UI design for in-app builder, okay? Um, they use ShadCN under the hood, let's take a look. And obviously ShadCN is a great foundation for building your app in terms of a coherent look because we can customize, extend, and build on already created components. So you'll probably actually recognize this from the design that I've created. And guys, ShadCN is supposed to be customized. Most people just leave it. <laughs> That's fine because it, yeah, it just looks so good. But make it your own. You can change everything about ShadCN. What we want to retain here is visual hierarchy, layout, spacing, responsive design, interaction. All of that stuff is already baked in. But just simply changing the brand color, for instance, will start to make it your own. I wanted to quickly let you know about my two flagship coding with AI courses. The first course teaches you how to build a complete full stack SaaS app using Cursor. You'll integrate essential tools like Stripe for payments, AI services, and email, all while building with Next.js, Superbase, and Vercel. It's everything you need to go from zero to production-ready web apps. The second course is for anyone who wants to build a native mobile apps with Cursor. You'll learn how to create a fully functional app with in-app payments, push notifications, AI features, and email integrations. And you'll finish by deploying your app to the Apple App Store and Google Play. And the best part, you don't need to know how to code. I'll teach you how to think like a product engineer and guide the AI model to build your app with you. If there's ever been a time to learn how to build with AI, it's right now. So come join me. For the sake of this tutorial, I've just left raw ShadCN designs within V0, but again, I can go much, much further to make it super personalized to my own use case and style and taste, that is. So top right-hand corner, I'm on version 21, all right? Now, each of these versions, well, they, they cost money. And actually, the version I preferred is version 19, where um, the nav bar was laid out slightly differently. I wanted to show you the costs associated with this because that's part of the reason why we're starting in V0 and continuing within Cursor. So I've scrolled down to my billing and usage, and most of the app was built on August 7th. So if we scroll across to August 7th, we can see that each message has a associated cost, all right? 18 cents, 16 cents, 21 cents, 24 cents. So we could say on average, it's about 20 cents per uh, chat, all right? I send text, it builds UI, that costs around 20 cents. So I'm on version around 20, 21, um, and it cost me overall when I was calculating around $3, all right? So pretty good for what I've got. I've got three pages. Some of them are quite functional. I've got a booking form, etc. But that's just interaction, that's just UI. Now, you could say, Craig, that's so expensive, I'm gonna go straight to Cursor. Sure, but I've gotten to a result a lot sooner. So overall, I think it kind of balances 
it out. And to me, my time is um, really, really valuable. So I have in the past built entire apps. I've built a marketplace app. I had about 24 different pages um, and that cost me uh, about 150 US dollars in credits. So for 150, I get something pretty vast, scaffolded app with all of the designs and interaction in place. And then I exported and re-imported cursor. Now under the hood, V0 is using Next.js because V0 and Vercel are part of the same company, okay? V0 is a project from Vercel. So it is Next.js using Shadsian components and with Tailwind. Next.js is definitely my favorite framework. So we've got three pages, okay? Um, I've got my main page, I have a search page with the map, and then I have an actual listings page. Here we have the components, so header components, home card, etc., and map view components. And then I've basically uploaded all of the images that we're populating into the app to display homes. So how do we actually get the stuff into Cursor? Let's pretend that we kind of finish our design at the stage. We're ready to go to Cursor. Well, there are sort of three different ways to, to do it. Um, at this stage, because I have three paid pages, I actually just want to open the entire project in Cursor. But what I could do is import certain components into Cursor. I could just build a component if I wanted. Uh, I could download a file and import the file uh, into Cursor or into my project. There are many, many ways uh, to work between V0 and Cursor. And the third way I'm gonna show you is how to continue to use V0 for generating UI and synchronize with Cursor. But let's look at the, the two fastest first. So number one, there's more option down here. We have download zip. Now this is the most straightforward way because we can just download the project into a folder onto our computer and open it in Cursor. Let's try it. Okay, so I just opened up the project. It's called Unique Stays, or well, Unique Stays Hero. And here is the app. And I've got one, two, and my third page. Here are my components that we look through. Header, home card, listing details. And here is my public folder with all of these images used. So here's an image that's been used. Here's another one. These are just from Unsplash. Okay, so to get up and running, all I need to do is start the server and then open a browser. So I'm going to go to the terminal and type pnpm dev. That starts the server on localhost 3000. Let's get that going. There we go, localhost 3000. Here I can see the little Next.js icon here, view homes. Yeah, the homes. I've got some configuration to do around Mapbox here in terms of my environment variables, but that's easy enough. Here is my cliff house. And here is my date selector. Pretty cool. Okay, that's method number one. Downloaded the zip, open it in cursor. And at this stage with this particular method, I'll probably just stay in cursor. Let's have a look at another way. So what I'm gonna do is just make a change to this particular file. And there's actually nothing more on this landing page. So I'm gonna say, create a feature section below the hero that contains instructions to book a home. Three step process in cards with icons. All right, scrolling down. One, two, three. <laughs> Looks great. I love it. And we could do something like this. We could say go to the design tab, select the card, and the shadow is a bit intense. So I'm going to say instead of shadow large, go shadow normal. That's better. Back to chat. Save that, 
Great, so how do we get this into our design? And this is where this option comes into play. So add to code base, run this command in your console. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to copy that command. I'm gonna head back to cursor. I'm gonna open up another tab and I'm gonna paste in the command and off we go. I'm gonna say yes to override page.tsx because it's the first page that we're trying to change here. Okay, let's check out localhost 3000. And if we go back to the home page, here we go guys. It's now been added to the code base. So let's just see where we're at with this. So step one was get the project open onto cursor. Um, and then if we wanted to add to this, we could sort of move back and forth, do some stuff uh, in V0, and then use that particular command to um, update the project. I can see how things can go wrong here. Um, so this isn't my favorite approach, but it's one that can work for sort of simple updates. Once I start getting logic in here, that's when I want to start using GitHub with the two-way sync. Let's take a look. All right, why don't we, um, let's rename this. So this is just called unique stays, not unique stays hero. And top right hand corner, I have connect your branch. So I've connected Bill Camp, my own branch with, for my coding with AI education company, and I'm gonna name this unique stays. Okay, so this is going to create a repository in my Bill Camp GitHub account. So why are we doing this? Well, we're doing this because I can pull or fetch changes from cursor that have been made with V0 without having to leave cursor. And this is kind of how developers work. So if you're in a development team using cursor, you'll have a designer on the team, you'll have some backend devs, you know, you have infrastructure devs all working on the same project in different branches, pushing changes, and then other parts of the team fetching changes. And that's really how you work. And with this, we can basically synchronize these changes. So we can push changes to GitHub and then we can fetch them in Cursor. And this is kind of the more professional approach. And I'm going to set my, yeah, I'm going to use the main branch for now. There's a lot more to learn about this and I do have courses around version control, but I'm going to set my active branch to this one. Okay, so it failed to load Mapbox and that's just because Mapbox requires a key. I'm not going to get into that now, but my initial build with V0 is V0 handled the keys safely. Uh, so all I need to do is add a key to my env.local or wherever that key is stored to resolve that, but I'm not going to get into that now. Let's crack on. So let's head into my GitHub account. So here is my GitHub account and here are my projects and here's my latest project updated one minute ago. I can see I left off the S. And quite simply, to get this up and running on Cursor, all I need to do is click on the green code button, and then by selecting HTTPS, I can clone using the web URL. Okay, so I'm going to copy to clipboard, and then I'm going to actually open up the terminal at this stage. And I'm going to say git clone, because I want to make a copy of this folder on my computer and then open it in Cursor. All right, that's done in a couple of seconds. Let's close this down. And basically this would have created a folder on the computer that I can now open a cursor. So I'm gonna close this folder, okay? That was called unique stays hero and I wanna get the unique stay one. So I'm simply gonna go browse for it. Okay, that's up and running. Something I failed to show you the last time I did this was, what I need to do is just to run, um, pnpm install, just to install the package.json files on this particular computer. Then after it's done that, I can run, I can start the server, pnpm dev. Okay, so called unique stay, let's go check out localhost 3000. Refresh localhost 3000, and there we go, we're up and running. Fantastic. 
we can see that we have a few issues here and guys, we can just go get to work now um, with a cursor agent and sort of fix some of these teething problems. But why don't we do this? Let's test the synchronization. So one of the things um, we're gonna change just to test this is we're gonna go to design, click on this text and say, explore unique states, okay? Go up here and say push changes. Actually, we need to save that first and then push changes. So back in cursor, I'm gonna open up a new tab and I'm just going to check that we're on um, the main branch. We should be, should be only one that's correct. And then I'm simply going to say, git pull origin main, because actually before we do that, let's just confirm that those were successfully pushed to GitHub. Okay, so I refreshed and it said that one minute ago we had an update. If I go to the main page, I can see that the word explore has been added. All right, let's, but let's look at localhost. Here is localhost. If we go back to unique stays, it just says unique stays. All right, we want to get the explore up and running by basically pulling the changes from GitHub. So I'm going to run git pull origin main. Okay, go back to localhost to confirm. Refresh, and now we can see explore unique states. So this is my preferred way of working with V0. Uh, we can simply continue doing the design uh, in V0 and then pushing the changes to GitHub and then pulling the changes down to cursor. Now, you just need to be a little bit careful with logic here. Um, I prefer to, as much as possible, finish designing a particular page or a component before I start adding logic, otherwise, files become overwritten. But maybe that's for uh, another video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.